the net position in a government is, and we talked about this before, remember we have our financial, uh, our accounting formula is assets equals liabilities plus equity. Now, since not-for-profits and governments don't have equity, and even in corporate accounting, we can rewrite the equation to say assets minus liabilities equals equity. Equity can also be called net assets. And specifically, we need to call it net assets here because, well, we don't have equity. There's no owners of the government. So net assets is our term. That's what we use. And that's how we get our net position in our financial statement, statement of net position. In government-wide financial statements, these governments, they're encouraged to report net position as the difference between assets plus deferred outflows of resources and liabilities plus deferred inflows of resources. So these are accrual-based concepts, right? Deferred inflows and outflows, those are accrual basis. The statement of net position is broken up into three components. We have net investment in capital assets. We have restricted and unrestricted net assets. Net assets is like your net position, is like your net worth. So your net worth is calculated by all of your assets. So your 401k, your cash, your home, your investment accounts, minus liabilities, such as student loans, credit cards, mortgage, et cetera, equals your personal net worth, which is net assets. Bring that over there. All right, so net investment in capital assets, this includes all capital assets, net of accumulated depreciation, just like in corporate accounting, and any debt currently outstanding that was incurred to acquire or construct these assets. All right, so we have, I don't think we've seen this before. We net the asset against any debt incurred specifically to acquire that capital asset, that building, that land, that capital asset. So restricted net assets, restrictions are imposed by external activity. Okay. So similar to what we saw in governmental fund with our restrictions on cash, we've got, in this case, restrictions imposed by external activities. This component includes restricted assets reduced by liabilities and deferred inflows of resources related to those assets. This is going to be, we've got resources that are restricted because we need to use them for something because uh, external activity, so a bank is demanding them or they are to be given to someone else. And then unrestricted obviously is everything else. This includes the net amount of assets, deferred outflows of resources. So you will owe those eventually. Uh, liabilities, deferred inflows of resources, not grouped into one of the other two components. So if it doesn't fall into one of these two, it falls into unrestricted. All right, interfund receivables and payables. If you remember from our consolidations, we have intercompany, in this case, interfund. So in the government-wide financial statements, we eliminate interfund activities within major activity categories. All right, that sounds pretty similar, very similar, actually exactly what we saw in corporate, so such as governmental activities or business type activities, which are displayed for government-wide presentations to avoid grossing up balances of assets and liabilities. Uh, Interfund receivables and payables that are eliminated, they are all eliminated except for the net residual balances of amount payable between government and business type activities. Um, and receivables and payables to fiduciary funds, so since those are separately stated, those are going to be treated like assets or liabilities derived from external sources. Just other side notes there. Here's an example of our statement of net position, I promised you, and I follow through on my promises. So this is governmental activities. These are our governmental fund as well as internal service. Business type is just enterprise. And off here to the side, that's fiduciary. Somewhere over there. All right. Cash, derivatives, normal things you would see on your balance sheet. And if we go here, now we see our other items such as deferred inflows of resources, net position. Here we see our net investment in capital assets, restrictions, and unrestrictions. Don't need to particularly memorize this, just be familiar with it. And if you see a question asking about it, refer back to it, right? Just like in reg, if you see a question asking about something on the tax form, refer back to the tax form. In audit, if you see something, a question referring back to an audit report, go see it on the audit report. It makes it more solidified in your mind and it makes it real. 